we can start the next round table now that is connected with the issues of the beginning young uh, teachers. So dear colleagues, we have quite a lot of talks. I cannot see all the speakers right now. Perhaps we, we may have even more time for discussion than we thought. Uh, originally, I can see uh, all the Russian speakers. I can see Preston. Um, and I cannot see the Taiwanese speakers. Perhaps they will get on. Uh, but they have a video video presentation, so it might be it might they may not be able to actually take part because the time shift. Where are they? How are we going to deal with them? I need send us the, the videos, the videos, uh, video talks. But they will not take part in the discussion for sure. I can uh, all right, I can understand, yes. So, so maybe we'll have more time for the section, which is good. So, dear colleagues, I suggest that we work in the following way. Um, I think that everybody can use the chat and I would like to uh, suggest that we use it very actively. It economizes time in general. So while we are mm, doing the, the, the talk, uh, the speaker may may be able to answer those, those points. So maybe there'll be some, some kind of parallel life going on there, which is comfortable because uh, uh, well, uh, so if uh, if there's uh, less talkers, uh, uh, so we will have time to discuss uh, uh, about presentation. Uh, at least several questions where we are. We speak about like 12 minutes, maybe. So I think that we can proceed, we can start. First, first talk is uh, mine. Can you see the, can you see the presentation? Yeah, it's visible. Yes, there's also a on YouTube. Я в нее буду периодически посматривать, если там будут какие-то тоже вопросы, то, соответственно, буду их сюда передавать. Вот. Итак, значит, смотрите, в целом у нас сегодня секция, как я уже сказала, посвящена проблематике начинающих педагогов, особенностей их адаптации к рабочему процессу, вот, особенности их профессионального развития, проблем, с которыми они сталкиваются. Значит, в частности, мой доклад называется «Социалирующие педагоги к разнаправленной образовательной коммуникации. Трудности перехода». А дело все в том, что, как мне представляется, исходя из довольно многолетних наблюдений за тем, что происходит в системе образования, московской, и не только московской, российской, в принципе, значит, мне кажется, что Одна из ключевых проблем, проблемных точек, которые камней преткновения, что ли, oh. да, которые не очень... One of the key problem points is uh, that something that doesn't allow us to move from the old uh, idea of resultiveness to the modern quality. Uh, uh, so, uh, uh, of course, uh, 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 if we speak about the quality in general, then uh, I understand that uh, it happens in most of the cases. Uh, uh, so pedagogy is dominating. Uh, 
вроде как уже понимает, что он не единственный транслятор и не единственный источник. Uh, uh, of course, teacher is not the sole translator of the knowledge. So he, he, it must be. Uh, 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 it, it must be technologically uh, happening that. Uh, uh, very, very rarely do we see the discussions of the discussions and group work uh, when there is a signal, uh, information, uh, when it happens not only on the line of uh, uh, pedagogue line, uh, uh, pedagogue uh, student to student, when we are speaking about uh, inter, inner uh, disciplinary uh, questions. So when we start the laboratory, professional competence, uh, I understood that there is no, no point uh, of doing all the uh, conditions. Uh, uh, so it's... Uh, uh, it will be done through three blocks of information. Look, we did the, the uh, research the way the students see uh, the quality of education. I will not speak about that, you can see it. Uh, we uh, did the reflective uh, issues of uh, Olympics and, and professional, uh, those are students. Uh, uh, it's rhetorical. Th those that came to the semi-final uh, videos and we were checking those uh, that in the upper uh, part of the Pogorsa. Those are the best students. Mm. First, we saw that uh, there are agreements and then uh, uh, what they're talking about. Uh, and the third one is, uh, uh, well, they, well, speaking about uh, professional teachers, those, uh, those students. Uh, uh, and so what did they tell us uh, on this topic, on the topic of this uh, uh, communication? Well, for, from the students uh, bench so when you want to try to uh, what problem is, he, uh, is in this situation is uh, 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 what they do in this discussion work um, you want to look back at the students uh, uh, and uh, so we asked the students uh, what they're, they're thinking and uh, uh, what the students uh, think is that uh, uh, what the, the work of uh, our uh, people, what's, what's happening. So uh, it's uh, 60 to 65 percent. Well, of course, we can discuss it uh, uh, at, at the, in the classes, yes. Uh, so these uh, lectures work. Uh, problematic works. Uh, uh, that's what's happening. Uh, so uh, this this is also a big segment. So the, the way it's, uh, it can be discussed. Uh, uh, and you can see that the students uh, uh, have a big work. So it's about professional work of students. What they're thinking about, about their professional work. So uh, we want to uh, uh, continue with these discussions and to see what's going on. Um, and many of us uh, tell us, uh, yes, uh, of course, yes, that's what we're doing. Uh, and we see that uh, students 
высокая. Да, то есть лояльность к качеству образования высокая. Оно соответствует ожиданиям. Реальность соответствует их ожиданиям. So that is the question whether the expectancies correspond to reality. And then we take a look at the winners of various Olympiads. So they are what we call a cluster of ambitious people, those who want to achieve something, they show good results, and they consider it to be the best. And so if we are discussing, we are talking to them between uh, the semifinals and the students respond to us. So they were talking about the quality of their education. They think that they can work really well considering discussions, arguments. And that's what they say. 48% say that they will work to create their critical analytical skills. And so they work on, they would like to have master classes dedicated to it. And that's quite a complicated issue. And so it forms the critical idea, the critical understanding. But you know, I wouldn't suppose that I can do it. But they suppose that they will be able to, as they assume that they know how to work on it. So actually, we see there are a lot of people who would like you know to use the frontal work to hear what we see we see uh, some of hesitations or as the plan is very ambitious and then we see what's really happening we have analyzed more than 20 demonstrational um, semi-finals and of course, we wanted to see if they do correspond to what they say, to the dimensions being called. Do they create this critical understanding, whether they work with arguments, whether they can work with hypotheses, if they pose questions? No, they don't, of course. So actually, this intention, you know, with drums, so students think that they do that, but actually, when we try to see how much do they work with these issues, if they do give open um, tasks to be discussed, they are not for repetition, but for understanding. So while the question, if the question is valuable for the student or not, all that is critical thinking. And that's uh, the sample it shows the result on 20 percent does it and what can we say that they do it actually we can't and we we're not too strict so if we do that the percentage will be lower so in order to see that so i would like to resume that that is the sample of the best of the best what do we see in other samples of those who didn't participate in the Olympiads. And also, we would like to see what do the students show as their own disadvantages and deficits, whether they see that they didn't work on the critical uh, thinking. But we understand that this discussion organization and the understanding of the tasks and the purposes, if they work with projects, they actually don't uh, show it to be their disadvantage. They don't see it, they don't focus on it. They understand that somehow they do use the group work, but the specific thinking work has not been conducted and they don't understand it. So that's beyond their professional reflection. So actually, considering the deficits, they were majorly discussing that they hold in focus the time they must work on all the uh, stuff they have been working on and uh, you know the flexibility and the possibility to adapt was considered a deficit only for four percent of students and now we'd like to pass to the third block which is like you know meeting the reality and then we take a look at this survey of the teachers those who worked for one year two years or three years of experience so considering the question like which of these skills should we develop in yourself in the near year 
and we're talking about the supervisors and the young teachers, you see that the surveyors have quite a long line of 68% that you should know how to flexibly uh, react to the situations that happened during the lesson. That was out of focus of the students. And now we see that this necessity appearing and the dominant here is, you know, to find the tasks so that everyone would get the material, even though that has been in the focus. And, you know, the reality rests the same. So that's something that should be actually uh, put into the scheme. So that is meeting the reality. So the organization happens to be the most complicated and discussions are nearly never conducted and actually focus groups and the reflection here is done. So yeah, we do conduct it, but we don't know how to do it. So at students, they, well, being students, they saw that they could do anything. But young teachers say, you know, we don't know how to do that. And here we have an interesting image that shows us, and unfortunately, professional reflection field doesn't com comprise understanding that there are most relevant problems of young teachers and uh, the um, attention, the long to prolonged attention to this or that task. It doesn't correspond to charisma or to the knowledge of the teacher, no. That depends how can you facilitate and moderate the project and how you can actually organize and structure the whole process. So uh, as far as I consider it and I steer it, you know, this experience of organizing of the horizontal communication of enjoying thinking slows down, it slows down. So while uh, drawing a conclusion of all three conversations, we have just a fragmented understanding and it is differentiated that not all group tasks create discussions. And so the question of the student is not something that you really focus on, but that should be the key of formation of a true result. So actually some subject tasks, subject discussions, are a problem, but without it, you can't really hold any discussion. So the overall result is that we haven't shaped the understanding of a horizontal discussion and that that is the key for the subjectivity and self-regulation. Uh, so that's it. Uh, I will not say anything else. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't didn't mark the time, but I I wanted to do it as fast as I could. So I'm trying to open the chat. Uh, so there's no no questions to the chat. So dear colleagues. Mm, probably will start moving. Uh, so start asking questions in the chat, Natalia. Jebina, hello. Uh, can you uh, can you start a presentation, please? Uh, professional identity. Natasha, will you start, please? Mm. Will you start? I would like to take part uh, in the uh, professional experience. Uh, uh, so we started a lot of information uh, and the approximate uh, list is here in the slide. So before, uh, well, right now there is no uh, clearly accepted term uh, professional identity. Some of them are uh, seemingly more, some seemingly less. And uh, mm, so it's uh, uh, some kind of definition. So 
the structure of profession, professional identity is six component and, and the core is the philosophy of profession. The philosophy of this profession is uh, all values, uh, goals, uh, uh, convictions, and uh, uh, all the professional understanding uh, and the main element. All of them are uh, here in the scheme. So analyzing uh, particular uh, sources, uh, uh, there's uh, five issues of identity. Uh, so a professional ident identity is uh, formed uh, according to uh, the career trajectory and it's uh, integration of the idealistic uh, of uh, initial understanding with the reality in which we have to do our work. Uh, the second is the uh, sustainability or dynamics of the professional identity. Most of, of the things that it's a uh, it's, uh, 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 continuous process, it's more dynamic than it is static. Uh, and uh, young teachers go through the um, shift in their identity. They used to be very idealistic and they understand the hard reality and sometimes it can be a really difficult, painful moment. But the mentorship problem can uh, can solve this. The third issue is the sub subjectivity, uh, sub su subjectiveness uh, issue. Uh, this is the, the conscious understanding of being in the profession and understanding its profession ideological uh, questions to this work. So the, the subjectivity is, uh, uh, well, this this uh, works were, were, were happening with, the, with this uh, unformed subjectivity. This, uh, uh, we, we can say that uh, high professionalism uh, and conscious uh, presentation of the profession, we cannot even talk about because more than 60 uh, percent want to change the profession. Now let's talk about the role of so social uh, uh, group context. This is an important topic uh, and it's becoming more and more difficult to work. There's more and more uh, requirements for the pedagogues and of course it all, um, uh, it all brings to, well, to the decrease in their self-respect and they uh, they feel really marginalized. Uh, there is a survey beginning from 2008 to 2016. A few fewer people believe the, the teacher's profession prestigious. Most of them believe it's non-prestigious. Uh, and the fifth topic is uh, uh, the professional identity and, mm, and burning. So if we're going to six component uh, top. So that's, that's um, the issue of uh, burning. So of course, uh, if, you're, if you're dealing with colleagues, if it's toxic, uh, unhealthy, Think that it's uh, it also requires burning, and uh, at the end uh, we have to create conditions for forming professional identity. Already, when uh, teaching students and the mentorship is an important element that we have to input in here. Professional identity is dynamic, and subjectivity is a, is a base uh, condition of its forming. Mm, that's it. Yes, thank you, Natasha. I'm trying to ask a question in the chat. Yeah. Thank you very much. So I want to tell you uh, what uh, in, in our research, there's been, uh, we found several things related to the MPGO students. When we asked them if you are planning to work at school when, when you finish the university, uh, quite a lot of them say, yes, we do. So when we, we start asking them, did it uh, 
uh, did it uh, influence uh, 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 well, for example, having practice and uh, teaching, uh, has anything uh, influenced on this? They say, no, nothing's influenced. Yeah. So how do you think, does it all have any relation to the professional identity? Is it all connected to this problem? If nothing influenced their decision of working at school, then uh, then this uh, identity, well, it's uh, nothing. Nothing really showed them uh, well, what's going on. So when they start working at school, well, this identical move will will be quite painful. All right. So. Uh, when uh, uh, when they are uh, uh, basing their experience on their previous experience. So you also asked about the professional prestige uh, that tells us that the prestige is uh, decreasing. It's like uh, uh, salary improving, uh, salary is improving, but the uh, prestige is going down. Well, it's not so untypical if uh, if it's happening, then at least they try to raise the salary. Uh, so it happens that the money is uh, is kind of a compensation factor here. Yeah, yeah, I think it's all, yeah. Because what's happening is that they're trying to pay uh, as much as they can, but with every year, uh, teachers really want more and more. And generally people want to work and earn more. So teachers really feel marginalized so what they do, they will provide them with some kind of stimulating uh, payment, allocating money to them, but uh, it doesn't always improve the mood anyway. So, And why do you think they feel uh, more and more marginalized? What's the reason? Mm, so we have to move to the next year's, uh, uh, next year's uh, research, right? So we can all start working here, we can. So my experience is telling me that uh, teachers uh, are not, uh, well, they are upset by the fact that it's uh, this service issue. Uh, uh, so it's, it's, it's a sub subjectivity factor. So the higher subjectivity, the higher is the uh, level of subjectivity. Krish, you, you want to say something? Yeah, a couple, couple of things I want to mention. Uh, practice, pre-diploma practice, uh, 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 a very important issue is that uh, when uh, uh, a manager in practice, he is a uh, uh, well, he's uh, disposed to showing the entire picture. Well, then it, 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 the reality shock will be softened. So the groups have changed, and uh, and the the group atmosphere is uh, uh, it can be variation, can be practice. Uh, so this this is an important condition. Uh, so uh, based on uh, one group, uh, the problems uh, don't exist, and this uh, issue uh, is not figuring. So we come to next teacher that uh, has more experience. Uh, so this is not uh, a beautiful situation. Uh, so it's uh, uh, mm, uh, so we should look at this and we should understand mm, so what first steps are here and uh, well basically my experience uh, is uh, uh, is very big but it's uh, it, it also gives us a very very well a lot of other people have this so now we're moving to the mentorship we have two speakers here first the rule and then the
Наташа, we have a question for you in the chat. You can answer in the chat. В чате. Are you here? I will switch on the presentation. Uh, can you see? Видно, да? Слышно. There's not so many talkers now uh, here, so we can slow down a little bit, actually. Dear colleagues, good afternoon. Today I will be telling you not so much about international experience, and I really hope that it will be useful. So, in our laboratory, we analyzed uh, more than 10 sources related to uh, to mentorship uh, with, for formulating of, of several issues, uh, more than uh, experienced specialists. Mm. Uh, so it's about uh, uh, well cooperation with the with the points. Uh, if to look at the uh, uh, the uh, goals, uh, well you will you will see the emotional professional uh, support uh, because the young young teachers in the first years of of teaching they are. Uh, dealing with the, a lot of psychological problems, uh, decrease in their uh, certainty and uh, self-burning. So first of all, they, they really need psychological support. So it's a socialization, adaptation, uh, possibility of development and growth. Uh, Mm. Uh, so we can discuss that there's uh, several different uh, ways of using mentorship uh, as as a, uh, as a tooling for achieving your goals uh, but from what we analyzed we can see the following that the mentorship is used uh, uh, by educational uh, policy makers to increase the number of uh, uh, teachers to retain good teachers. Mm. Uh, we will work, uh, we speak more about it when we speak about uh, uh, American experience. So what uh, problems uh, do young teachers have when we speak about mentorship? What problems do they have in the first years of work? Uh, so the, the difficulties that you can see in the slide immediately, but I would like to comment on the differentiated uh, learning. When we started uh, dealing with that, when we were discussing it, when we did the, uh, the research of professional deficits, our students, also mentioned this problem. Mm. Mm. Uh, the students, young teachers, they do not have uh, skills uh, working in practice with students that have particular, particular uh, demands. So when they come to school, they'd been, they had been taught to work uh, on the real cases, how to deal with these situations. So they uh, they get these problems, and not only they are not uh, uh, not abroad, but it also happens here. So so if we 
uh, start uh, using uh, other countries' experience. Let's start from the United States, all right? So the main topic there is to retain teachers to keep them in their profession. According to the recent uh, uh, estimations, lots of teachers uh, uh, leave their their work. There's huge we have a fluidity of personnel, liquidity of personnel, and uh, uh, in the first five years, let's say about how, how the teachers leave. So that really decreases the quality of education because lots of students do it. They they were uh, changing the, their uh, their uh, teachers all the time, and 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 the performance went down. So we decided to use this factor uh, as a possibility to keep them. Uh, so it was found that teachers that have uh, have uh, mentors, they do not leave so soon. So if we look at uh, the United States, practically in every state, they have their own system of mentorship. Uh, ask uh, them to include in the programs. Uh, so if we generalize these materials, uh, so we can three main elements that are characteristics for every state. Uh, so this, this is observation in the classroom on the part of the beginning teachers, but also uh, watching them actually. Uh, so each key moment forms uh, the system of evaluation of the young teacher and we have also the feedback from um, the um, supervisor. And the third point can be uh, the participation of the teacher's community. There are also documents that do regulate the programs for the uh, supervising in each state. Especially if you take a look at California, they have one of the positive experience. They have a center for new, for young teachers, for new teacher center, and they are working in this program of supervising and according to the law, every new teacher must have this introductory program with the supervision that is regulated by the government and each teacher has his own individual introductory plan that has its own goals and strategies to receive them and of course there are social documents that do regulate the progress of each teacher and well, while working on this program it lasts for two years and each new teacher passes this program with the supervisor. And according to these programs, we have elaborated eight principles according to which they move. So what I would like to notice here with these principles, we have the time for cooperation between the teacher and the supervisor. As far as in this research, as we have seen, we are talking a lot about the fact that just physically we don't have enough time to meet just to, you know, sit down and have a talk and understand what's happening and uh, to see each other and how a supervisor can help a teacher. So that's an interesting thing to discuss. But one of the states in California, we had that financing. 10% from the teacher's work time is being financed by the state so that this 10% of the load 
would be replaced so that he could meet his um, or her supervisor. That means that we must cooperate and understand the goals and the results for such a program and actually work together. So in the USA, they are quite different. The systems do differ from each other and they're different in uh, the and the criteria for uh, choosing a supervisor is also different. And in New York, for example, there is a special commission that chooses the um, uh, supervisors and they have a list and the commission uh, works on that choice. In the Texas, for example, they have a criteria on the quality. So the supervisor must have not less than three years of experience. He must work in the same um, subject. He must work in the same school and in the same class. And of course, they have quite strict criteria so he ha should have good results, uh, so his pupils should have good grades. So no, just uh, choosing a supervisor doesn't guarantee you good results. And you need some components so that the supervision would be successful and fruitful. And so the National Statistics Center has allowed us to see these three components for the young teachers. And these are that the teachers and uh, the supervisors should teach the same subject. So that is the cooperation with other teachers while the teaching process, and of course, that is the communication with the other network of teachers. An important thing is that supervisors, well, actually, it's good not just for the government, you know, this tutoring and supervising process is good also for the supervisors. And that is what the research showed, the research held in Hong Kong. So we were just studying how do the supervisors see their role in supervising. So 70% said that they have seen some professional growth from it, and that would have been seen in different fields. So it could mean personal, professional, self-reflection, and uh, they could understand and reanalyze their own practices. So it helps them to define their own strengths and their feeble qualities. And actually, young teachers can also have something that you can learn from them and help them really. Considering the preparation of the young, uh, the preparation, the teaching for the supervisors, I would say that's quite a problem because this tutor institution is being discussed and it's quite a complicated one. And the role of a uh, tutor is not prescribed really well. And in different countries, you uh, have various attitudes. And, you know, in the Swedish system of the supervising, they have launched the debates whether to include or not to include the supervisors into the final assessment and evaluation for the certification. And the system means that the supervisors must give grace to the uh, students or shouldn't they? So you should understand what was the personal growth, how did the uh, student change during the program. And actually, if you start this evaluation process, the situation changes. It's not that kind of a trust 
it's no longer friendship and it can influence really the results of the supervising procedure. So that's all that I wanted to say. We can discuss it too. And during, on our next slide, we have uh, showed you the sources that we used. And actually, there are some questions that we might answer to. Thank you, dear colleagues. Thank you very much. And we have two questions. And there is an interesting discussion here from Yelena. So what I would like to discuss here, these are the questions in the chat that we would like to answer to them. So that we wouldn't restart this tutoring issue again and mentoring. So I think that we might discuss a small piece of the questions and then move forward. But considering this um, discussion, the key problem for me is that you had a slide that uh, this mentoring has the is a successful strategy both for teachers and for their students. You had a line that activity of this mentoring for rain elder teacher is a tool to reconsider your own experience, your own deficits. Like I'm looking at the mirror and I see what I lack, what I should learn actually. And Tatiana, are you here? I suppose that that is the idea that we should consider and maybe this year or the next year we should uh, launch a program of supplementary studies for qualification for the mentors. So we'll teach them not like how to be mentors but how to create your own self trajectory of your deficits and how to see your own deficits, how you would consider your own development when you understand, of, based on what you understand while mentoring younger colleagues. So that's my idea that I would like to speak about it. We can discuss it. Grigory, the floor is yours. So do you see the presentation? So I would like to launch it. I hope that it will work well. Can you see it? Yes. So the topic of my show discussion is as follows. The role of uh, mentoring as part of the education of a young teacher. We have analyzed three students' book, three guidance in England, in English, dedicated to the online work. And actually we see the growth of the articles and research dedicated to the online mentoring. So how do the working uh, models can be brought into the online space? And that's quite representative to have a look at our third point, that is, these are the publications on reddit.com. So those are the forums where you can have a uh, open communication possibilities and there you may see something in the middle between the forum and social network and i can say that that's quite a representative thing and so that is uh, the set of the uh, ideas that allowed us to classify several trends uh, the most important is that the mentoring is being brought to the online and that is just the trend that has become a locomotive that will actually lead to the other trends. So the mentoring becomes open 
they will discuss it a bit later and the enlargement of the tools for the online mentoring and that the fourth orientation is something that we usually lack but it is that the mentors and the students create a certain community and they create an original content on some problem cases or situation and i would like to your attention to the first trend that i would like to show you so that is a check and connect online guides or online mentoring guide for 2020 at the minnesota university so here we would like to know that authors show three main problems that we should focus on that is the illustration on the left and the most important are the negotiations between uh, the uh, tutor and his student via work with his family and they have just one idea that this gap that happened because of the pandemics when you don't see each other really should really uh, be uh, smaller so you know attracting a family you can have the off online help and you can do it distantly and that is the other possibility that really interested me that i would like to discuss so we have some attention in in this very booklet that empowers the creation of trust or the relationship between a student and the teacher and actually uh, that is what we call panoramas so you take a walk around the places you like to find some things in common or have a playlist so if we do translate it to russian reality i think that you know we don't really think what music do our teachers listen to that's not in the focus of our attention but here authors think that that would allow us to get closer and technologies allow us to share these playlists to put likes and etc and the second thing that i would like to discuss that is the guide 2019 that arrived that was created before pandemics so that was mentoring in the open which is an open mentoring or open space mentoring that's what we call it in russian basic principle is that we create small groups uh, dedicated to a certain case and in these groups you can allow other mentors and other teachers to come into it is if they are interested in uh, this topic and you can see the progress and see the ways of solution and how do you work on it so what you do you create the distant and online mentoring as a self-organized progress and you create small knowledge think tanks and that actually these are the online technologies that become the most important here and they should be comfortable so that is the second trend that uh, shows up that mentoring becomes more open and so that is the reddit.com site and actually if you can see a teacher there is a teacher from australia who asks if it's professional or not to have a mustache you know you know that's quite a detail that you know you won't really go to a mentor you ask this question to a teacher and there they have a lot of answers where they say that uh, of course you can or they just comment on it so here the um, discussion starts and the second idea is the strategies that can be used to manage behavior as a free service teacher so here is the plot the problem and they have various uh, comments so that is the community functioning and we see that uh, while being in russia i found this australian problems and that might be done by everyone so their comments are still growing and enlarging so considering the tool what can you use really 
So if we are talking about Australia, they were one of the pioneers in online mentoring, and that is explained by low density and the huge geography. And uh, what we see is that the email actually uh, evolved into ready-to-made solutions. So that is a cloud service that allows to have the online mentorship or just to have a dialogue or a polylogue and you have ready-to-made solutions. And in 2021, we can technically see the trends showing that this mentoring, online mentoring went further and we are using online chats uh, you can uh, find solutions and many colleagues have chats for young teachers who can actually share the uh, problems and get solutions and of course that is zoom so we are working via zoom now and that won't be uh, just a secret that we are uh, gathering teams from various fields and there are mentors who help their young colleagues. And so that is just the last point that I would like to show you that is a screenshot from a YouTube that actually shows that we have Australian experience here. So here are some real mentors and interviews, vlogs that are quite popular now. And what we see now in detail, so I have chosen several videos and and uh, here we have some voice channels and mentoring. And that is the blog. A person describes his own uh, mentoring experience. And of course, I didn't show that on a slide, but the near future, that would be quite an actual a relevant issue and we see a phenomenon of the reverse mentoring i would explain to you what's that we don't have any research on it and we don't have a sample we don't have the understanding and i don't think that we will actually see that the problem doesn't exist while going online we have seen that a lot of experienced teachers don't use it technologies really well and uh, frankly speaking, I have personally seen that, that the students of these mentors play a role of the knowledge centers, considering the technologies and how to use modern communication tools. So that's not just the community that we get, that is just the work on a certain uh, communication. So a young teacher helps He's a more experienced colleague how to use technologies and only then a more experienced uh, colleague helps methodologically or psychologically and etc. And like that, while drawing the results, I would speak about four major trends that are quite representative and they show where the mentoring goes and so we have been discussing it via platforms and that is the basic way uh, to find for us for mentoring to find in the near future and the question arises how to make it not less efficient than the real life solutions so the researchers work on how to use the already working constructs of the offline work into the online regime. So I have discussed several sources and major ones are seven. So thank you very much. So if you have any question, I will be glad to answer to them. Grigori, thank you very much. So does it really mean that everything goes to the creation of open friendly discussions in Zoom. Well, that's not just discussions. Not every region has the possibility to do it. 
when we will have the opportunity to have both discussions and video instructions and where we can create a chat for solving the questions here and now. And so actually, that online conferences they help us to minimize these issues of communication. And we will have such friendly conferences, actually. And do I understand you really well that considering of what you have found that confidentiality is not an issue to be discussed here, really? Yeah, that's what I wanted to discuss. So if we are talking about Reddit, and that is kind of a forum where people write about their problem, they are ready that people will discuss it. If you are talking about our legislature, you can't uh, pass your personal uh, data via messengers. But you know, when a young teacher has a problem, then uh, everything goes to the considered to be detailed. So if we are talking about confidentiality, I think that, yes, we don't really consider it much because it's quite relevant because, you know, this institute of mentoring is quite important again and we should find the ways. Uh, so I have the question to Mr. Preston. Could you please, uh, the, uh, could you please answer? to us. I hope that you have the possibility to talk to us. Mr. Preston, are you with us here? I, I am here. Can you hear me? Yes, of course. So the lady had a question. As far as I understand, you have the translation and you can use that simultaneous translation. So could you please, Mr. Preston, could you please switch on your video, please? So, thank you. So, do I understand that you are a student right now, that you are still studying? Yes, ma'am. So, I, I am actually in student teaching right now and have a mentor teacher. Uh -huh. And in which state do you study? Texas. Texas. Uh -huh. um, and could you please precise well, you see that we have been discussing the international mentoring programs and we have been studying a lot how do the teachers, young teachers work in the U.S., how do mentors work in the U.S. So could you please uh, tell us, so imagine we have a young teacher who graduates from the university and he comes to school, which are his major problems? So what major problems does he meet? Could you please tell us? something about it, please. I feel like the, the biggest thing like with uh, the student teaching and like having a mentor teacher is trying to find your place and your voice. And so um, the, the mentor teacher does a great job because I feel like the education department tries to find people of similar personalities that a way they can be a cohesive unit. Mm -hmm. And that engages the student teacher to actually be more involved in the classroom during their experience and um, just become more aware of how student uh, or classroom management goes and properly teaching. Because when, when we're learning about teaching, you, you have all the techniques, but actually putting them into practice um, the mentor teacher listens to you. And um, for instance, one of my things already that my student or my mentor teacher told me was before I start the notes, try to um, just have, he said casual conversation, but more so just, you know, y'all learned this last year. So some of y'all might uh, know it already because we are doing multiplying and dividing fractions and decimals right now and so it was it, it's actually like i understood that like it gets them more engaged and kind of makes them a little bit more confident in starting the next or something new um so i hope that kind of answered 
the question? Yes, yes, of course. Thank you. Спасибо большое. So thank you very much for your answer. So as far as I understood, actually we have the same problems. So that is the involvement and the engagement of your students. So that is practice, class management, class um, structuring. So as far as I understood, you have there in Texas a mentoring system. So when a young teacher has his own mentor and he works with that new teacher, is it? Yes, ma'am. So um, I'm actually in the I'm in the classroom with them, and so um, like when we first start off, they kind of like they'll teach the first two classes or three. It's different for each like mentor um, and how comfortable the student teacher is. But for for myself, um, my mentor teacher kind of like guides the first two classes, so I can feel fill it out and see how he does that and models it for myself so I can then um, try to teach the same thing if if that answered the question mm -hmm. yes of course and do you have maybe your own story like a student graduates from the university and the university continues to support the student. Do you have that university mentoring for students? Um, I know I know that my professors are always like, you know, keep in touch. And if you have any questions, even like they say after you graduate or after you're out of my classroom, like, you know, feel free to, you know, email me or contact me and you know, either just let me know how you're doing or a story, or if you do, you know, have a question about something, feel free to ask. So it's not like there's, it's set in place um, that you have like a specific person that you can go to, but I feel like um, Sam Houston has done a great job, my university, um, with the, the education professors about um, keeping relationships after you graduate. Mm -hmm. Uh, большое спасибо, очень интересно. Ну, то есть, насколько я понимаю, это такое история про личные отношения и про... Thank you very much. Uh, it's very interesting. And as I understand, this is about uh, actually relationships, uh, personal relationships, when the professors uh, keep maintaining their relationships with their, uh, with their graduates. It's not a program, as I understood, but it's a kind of natural part, natural component of uh, professional, professional communities. Спасибо, спасибо. Ну, давайте тогда продолжим uh, с выступлениями. У нас, насколько я понимаю, осталось два. Thank you very much. And now we have two two more talks, uh, Tatiana Sherbakova and Ed Preston. Uh, the Taiwanese guys uh, will not be here. Uh, one more person from Russia also has a connectivity problem. So Tatiana Vladimirovna, you will speak now if you want. Uh, Dan Preston, Dan Preston, uh, colleagues, thank you very much. I hope you can hear me all right. Yeah, yeah, okay, all right. Okay, I'll try to start the presentation then. Can you see it? Is it there? Yeah. Uh, uh, so thank you for, for these materials. Uh, uh, well, we, we have a connection to our system here. I was trying to write down some ideas uh, that the colleagues would uh, accumulate from everywhere about what, what else we can add to this. But what I want to do is that uh, Moscow City Pedagogical University came up uh, for his graduates, uh, their graduates, uh, it, it, it came up with some, something. So I will I will tell you about the platform. Uh, MGPU, the Moscow Pedagogical University, is your mentor. This is the platform that uh, our university created for its graduates that are mostly working in the Moscow region. Uh, some of them stay in Moscow, but mostly they uh, basically they can even work outside Moscow. It's open for everyone. Um, so I will not uh, dwell on the particular numbers uh, as for results, because this is a sort of tools tooling that is still a work in progress. Uh, we're still developing it. But uh, what I want to start from that four years ago, the university was uh, university realized that it had to formulate its attitude to its graduates and to kind of uh, transfer these interpersonal relationships uh, 
relationships with uh, with our uh, gra graduates, like 20, 25 year anniversary. So we accumulate a lot of graduates, blah, blah, blah. They're working in schools uh, and then university uh, accepts people, uh, students and these students who were prepared by our graduates. So it's, it's like, a system is maintained of uh, uh, personal contacts and personal connections uh, that started originally in the process of education. So anyway, we accumulated a big layer of graduates and um, basically the Moscow Pedagogical University is not just a name in, in the Russian education, it's already a sort of image connection, not only external, but your own connection because you personally graduated from it, you prepared someone, someone who came to this university to study further. So four years ago, we started a model was formulated uh, in the center of the core uh, model core is the graduate uh, first like bachelors, we orient on them those that do, that basically receive basic pedagogical education, then they uh, build their coordinate system. Some of them come back, some of them go to other specialities. But the point here is that we want to create a kind of comprehensive model that will uh, provide with the possibility to deal uh, with each other remotely. Uh, the students will, the, the graduates will be able to learn about the Moscow system of education. It's been changing very fast, very dynamic. Many people who come to study, they orient on their own personal experience, uh, those who come to, to be teachers, and they remember the schools back in those Soviet times, but it's not this, the same system anymore. Now, even four years ago, it was different. So the whole system has been developed with the idea just how it can be. Originally, we started working rather chaotically. Uh, there was a number of various formats, and you can see that in the slides, there were different formats, distant formats, personal contact, personal formats rather in social networks, uh, various types of connections, face-to-face, -face, business or distance. Uh, distant, the formats that uh, graduates appreciate is the possibility to go to Moscow schools. But the idea is that we try to go to those the schools whose um, management is actually composed of our own graduates. So what happens the kids that come to work in that school, they see the 10, 15 years in the Moscow system of education, you can you can actually grow, you climb the career ladder up to the school director, school principal. So many of them who come to this system of mentorship, they don't just solve their uh, personal interests, but they actually start to uh, build their uh, own career trajectory. They understand the Moscow system of education, you can actually be growing, you can actually be climbing, and you have your people around you. It's not being articulated so well, but this, this is a kind of kind of point that, that is being uh, uh, imprinted here. So everything goes cheeky picky and everyone likes everything, but everything is based on personal uh, private contacts, connections, agreements, and uh, it's it's quite a good program. Uh, well, it's why it's uh, uh, feeling, and uh, we we come to meet each other at home. We deal with each other. We discuss various things outside school as well. Uh, so all this is uh, provided by the Moscow State uh, City Pedagogical University, and the whole system here, how we started to deal actually uh, here five years ago there was the first uh, probing kind of launch of the certification the moscow teacher the project of the moscow city pedagogical university that suggested certain uh, additional testing for our graduates they are the kind of the several steps there they're quite complicated i'm not going to tell you much about that now but the idea is that the moscow university developed allocated rather additional means uh, for financing the, the graduates that showed, that demonstrated very well themselves in this testing, which is a big bonus for the school that receives a graduate like this. But you can see the number of those graduates been increasing and increasing year and year. And at the end, we came to a conclusion that all this system of different projects, uh, uh, well, 
uh, without uh, actually uh, cancelling it, we still have to come to some some distance system that will be specifically uh, sp well specific idea here. We wanted to tell you a little bit more about our system, the platform MGPU, your mentor, uh, distant mentorship. We've been working on it in the last year. We've been trying to uh, modify it, to enhance it, uh, to create competitive advantage to it, for it to be specifically different from what else we have around. So you can see the address there. You can actually try to enter as soon as you can. Uh, but so far, we allow everyone in. So at this time, at this point, we have announced this platform for the graduates of this year the bachelors uh, that uh, uh, finished their uh, studies in the Moscow Pedagogical Universities, 95 uh, kids got registered here. Those are the graduates that understood from the start in spring that they're going to school, that they needed advice, they would need advice. And that uh, you can see here on the platform, we have students uh, you can, in pink, you can see that uh, those are mentors. Um, and uh, the university worked recently on the preparation of the uh, teachers, teachers' composition, uh, number of teachers who are working there. And the idea is that distant mentorship should be carried out for our graduates, which is their direct, uh, direct function. Uh, we uh, taught them, we, we created training for them and kind of uh, competence upgrade, qualification uh, upgrade on mentorship, uh, distant mentorship where pedagogues learned how they could work with the system and how these mentors uh, services could be done. And what's more important, we generally discussed uh, this uh, very, very important topic what is uh, basically uh, mentorship and what is, how does it influence? So as much as we can understand the role of mentor, um, well, if, if, if you wanna deal with it, well, write in the chat, we, we will be happy. So basically, the platform accumulates all the activities to become the aggregator of uh, various events uh, offered by the university, maybe something that young teachers uh, uh, offer to each other, maybe start discussion, uh, and the mechanism itself, uh, it mechanisms are diverse. Um, but I would like to pay attention to the to the latest moment, the, the new new thing that was added to the platform consulting in the uh, separate case format, so to speak. We thought that uh, uh, a, a personal mentor is a good thing, and we, we really do not uh, deprive anyone of, of the possibility to come to this platform and uh, um, go go to your professor uh, through this platform, discuss things with him, but also to input some additional mechanism that will allow to quickly uh, deal with that platform, uh, to, to quickly uh, go to the platform and to receive a quick answer. Now I'm going to show it to you. I'll show how this scheme operates. So this is how you work with this, uh, with the shortage. The young specialist uh, receives a particular situation he has to solve. Uh, so the platform uh, allows the possibility to describe the situation. And while describing it, uh, there are fields that are uh, spacious where we can write descriptive uh, fields and there's fields that systematize the situation. These are this is a list of questions that um, young specialists, the pedagogue uh, receives in order to um, further specify the situation. And the mentor 
cannot even perhaps he didn't even seriously like consider this situation but uh, he can find a number of questions a list of questions that will uh, be sufficient for him to understand this situation so uh, this is the second step and at this with this we uh, we have no uh, possibility to uh, uh, you know uh, give each other a call and understand the situation so sometimes we have to, it's kind of automated at the end uh, maximally we were able to find the right questions so what's what's important here is that this is done not to take the load of the the shoulders of the mentor uh, it's important that uh, because it allows the young pedagogue to receive questions and to think through the situation that he describes uh, so uh, what happens is that in this uh, mentorship we put an accent on uh, just the fact that we not only have to ask the question receive instruction how to operate with it step by step but rather to reflect the situation by yourself uh, and this, in this case, the specifying questions uh, allow uh, to digest this system. And then the young specialist um, can start this, uh, this uh, he can have an open system, he can see many, uh, or he can choose a private moment when the situation hasn't been told to anyone uh, so it uh, it goes to the mentor and the, then it does get registered in the general archive of cases so uh, in the general archive uh, that uh, that you can read for yourself so this this is uh, yeah this is also possible here so after the young person formulated, the young specialist has formulated his question, he asks uh, the question, he answers the specifying question. He can uh, choose, well, he, he gets mentors at this point uh, on this particular area, this particular direction, and he chooses, he chooses uh, the, the final uh, kind of correlation of the of this inquiry and uh, then he, he selects the mentor not because I know him personally like I, I chose him but well because we have a big uh, university and the platform allows for the students to um, deal with the pedagogues professionals uh, with whom uh, graduates will, would not be able to deal, uh, didn't be, did, couldn't deal during the years of education. But what's important here is the young specialist that chooses uh, uh, the mentor for himself. It's the machine that offers him mentors uh, uh, in the correct area. So it cannot be, it may not be one name, it may be more than one. And the young specialist can choose in particular to for whom this question may be then uh, be that in personal or impersonal uh, open or closed form uh, for other uh, users the young specialist uh, receives an answer uh, and then that a mentor uh, can work with this system because there's like particular fields there and the mentor can't answer uh, so easily. Well, he has to, to prescribe uh, to write the answers to particular points. So I hope that the consultations will be useful, not just the facts. So then it's uh, the, the fifth point. Young specialist can um, start this. Uh, he can read this uh, and it's okay. If he can read it, say it's okay, I can solve it like this. Or he, he can say uh, that maybe it's not good enough and uh, he will redirect it to another mentor, his question to another mentor. Uh, so there's a chance to specify this situation 
at several stages. And in this case, we say we are moving away from the automation. So these, these moments of return of specifications, they provide with the, with the actual answer. And an important thing here is uh, the universal moment is uh, of the system is uh, is that a young specialist uh, does uh, is not in a um, permanent prolonged uh, prolonged uh, uh, kind of uh, monitoring of himself. He receives a particular uh, answer to a particular question specifically so in some other situation he can use this platform uh, using the personal uh, uh, question system to register for particular events so for us uh, as representatives of the scientific community this uh, last uh, six step is important uh, uh, so the question of public placing uh, of the particular cases. So, so on the one part, on the one hand, we hope that it will be a library of uh, solutions, and the interested specialists will, the specialist that is interest in it, that is uh, searching for questions will uh, see the questions to this topic and find a uh, solution. And on the other hand, for us. Uh, this uh, this is what we, sh we should see, what the young specialists are asking. They, they come to uh, the university, what they come to the university for. No, it's not. Uh, so speaking about uh, the, the tooling, well, of these possibilities, we have to speak about the risks as well. So the risks do exist here. Um, So the personal mentor school is the person uh, within school, within system, who uh, who is uh, mm, who can be trusted. And beginning from the system of education, uh, so it it can it can uh, have a, a sort of hidden thread why the young person why the young specialist can take something out of school, some kind of problem. So not everything is so clear, uh, but the principle is uh, is basically that. So these are the main points here. And I put them in the slide. So what's the idea of this system? And probably the last slide. Uh, but I want to I wanna hear your opinion. The platform is still being developed, it's a work in progress. So if you're in, beginning from September, start operating and you can introduce changes in the platform. So I just wanted to show you what we accumulated during summer. In May, our graduates were offered to get registered. Uh, 95 uh, pe persons uh, underwent registration, and even though the curricular year didn't start, we already received a number of cases. And uh, um, here you can see the correspondence, the correspondence and the distribution uh, to categories. At this point, we have like 11 rubrics, uh, and uh, uh, you have like uh, not like mutually exclusive rubrics, but so the young specialist can um, can take the case and answer uh, mentions several rubrics. In most cases, it's like uh, either one or two. And it's on professional ethics. It, it's uh, the methodology of uh, education of teaching. So in this diagram. Um, so all these deficits and everything that we started from, these are questions of motivation. Uh, and so this is about the class management as well and the issues of methodology. And these are all priorities uh, for young specialists and that's what they are interested in. They've been asking specifically about that. 
nevertheless, you can see that uh, questions exist for each category, and we wanted to see that the questions related to the city educational environment and digital technologies in the modern uh, digital distant education. So what we can see is that uh, this fear is not so important. It's not it's not like so many, many of them were interested in that, but the most interesting, the, the, mo the biggest pro uh, percentage of the interested people is the methodology of education relationships with the uh, teachers uh, and the professional ethics. So it's, it's what, and, and, and the, the uh, colleagues attitude and relationships with them. So these are uh, the priorities. So this is where I would like to stop. And uh, so I would like to get some kind of feedback, if it's okay, I really would. Perhaps you might see some other risks here as well, some, some kind of stumbling uh, stones, stumbling blocks. So I, I call on everyone to get uh, joined to the conversation, join the conversation. Oh, I haven't seen this, uh, this schedule, by the way, this, uh, this uh, uh, circle diagram. Of course, we come to the point that the disciplines and motivations are, uh, they are like, uh, their priority. Um, so you can see that this this is that we are moving in the right direction. Mm, that what we uh, what we can do somewhere here is uh, is the connection. So there's not there's a reaction. Natalia Novodarova's reaction from YouTube. So uh, now I will turn the floor over to Preston. Um, Tatiana Vladimirovna, you can answer uh, the questions in the meantime in the chat. And um, if we uh, do have any time remaining, uh, well, we will discuss that. Otherwise, uh, we can continue our communication in the chat. Can everyone hear me, see me? Yes, yes, everything is okay. All right. So, so today my, my project or my presentation is about enhancing the student's engagement and by creating an educational application for their phone. And- Could you turn off your video? You said turn my video off? Yes, yes, I, I now I see your presentation and it's okay because uh, internet is not so good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so, my so my presentation is about enhancing the students' engagement because like I said earlier, they we really need them to be engaged and technology is kind of paving the way for that engagement. Um, teaching is moving away from the traditional way of learning from just pen and paper, pencil and paper, and technology is, especially phones nowadays, is an extension of our body, or of our body. I've heard so many teachers say that uh, in the past couple weeks. And so as we see more and more phones, it's like if we can use an app to help engage the students and create this educational um, app, we can have them learn in a different way and something that they can actually like. So the focus of this work is to find the best and the most exciting way for students to become more engaged in research, exploration, learning, the core subjects, or even extracurricular classes. You have um, coding, robotics, art, um, just any subject in general that's in uh, all the different schools. So the we will show them how to use this this website it's called uh, mit app and innovator and so as you can see in the middle of the, the screen right here there's a little picture and that's their little logo that you can identify their the website by and you can create any kind of app you want you can make games uh, 
like as far as just answering questions, getting points, you can make a board game and you can even make some, some of y'all might know what Quizlet is. Um, it's basically where you can make flashcards for yourself. You can use this MIT app inventor, app in, in, inventor to uh, make your own kind of flashcard system that you might uh, like better. And so we'll include videos on quick help if they forget how to do something or show them where they can go to find help. And the benefits of this or the activities will enhance students achievement by actively engaging that student in hands on hands on studies of the most challenging content they have to learn. This project will also introduce students to skills that are needed for adulthood. So um, our goal as teachers are not just to teach them math, English, how to read or uh, Russian, whatever language uh, might be where you live, but it's actually to help prepare them for life. And the traditional way of learning can sometimes forget that. And with the new ways that using technology as a tool can help promote these life skills. So the outcomes will be using the MIT App Inventor to develop tools to create these apps. By using the students' desires to play games and fulfillment of success, they love to create stuff, even if it's just a picture on an Excel spreadsheet as they answer questions and it pops up um, a little bit of the picture at a time. We just did that last week and they love that. So just by able to create their own game that they can show to their friends could be a huge success. And so we uh, would love to start trying that this, this fall. Hopefully we can get started on that. This could even help students learn more about the STEM field. Um, any student, they're not sure what the STEM field is, and, you know, until they get to high school. But I'm, I'm my focus is in middle school, and hopefully by using this app inventor, we can get the students more engaged in um, a little bit more math, science, you know, engineering fields that are needed for the rest of our lives. And so the deliverables will be. Um, to pique the student's interest and show them that they can create their own desired mobile application because pretty much everyone by the time they get to middle school, I know some people um, aren't privileged enough to have a phone, but most people do. And by, able, by being able to create this mobile application will help all um, be more engaged, even outside of school, because if they have their phone, they can access that app and they can play that game, even if it's math or for reading or whatever subject it might be. And so the project based learning strategy is geared to engage the student and enrich their learning through a new way of developing applications for mobile devices. So they'll learn skills like perseverance, dedication, hard work ethic, and so many other skills that are very well needed for adulthood. There we go. So as you can see, um, this is the second screen of the page and I made a couple apps on my, or a couple apps. And this is one particular app that I use to help show what different things and then hopefully pique the student's interest when I show them. And so you can see at the top, there's a button that says, go back to home screen. That will take them to the very first page with the light bulb that you've seen on the first slide. Then if you click the definitions, you actually go to this picture on the right that has um, a little example. This is actually a Google Doc that is what this, sent, this app sent you to. And the students can write all kinds of different things. And so I put a little bit of math on there just because my focus is in math. But hopefully we can even get students who might be struggling in other subjects to use this for other subjects because vocabulary is very crucial, I know, in Texas because most of our students don't know English and it's it's needed. And so, for instance, at my school, most of the students are Spanish. For their first language is Spanish. And so by able by being able to create these definitions, it can help um, them better learn English and 
um, be more successful in school. And so the second um, one that says game on, as you can see, we'll go to this next slide and that takes you to the one on the far left. You can type your name in and this will make a little game. And so as you click start the challenge, um, this game is more just for multiplication and especially in lower grades before they get to sixth grade, they, they really need to know their, their math facts. And so this game in particular um, can help let them practice outside of school. And something that's it's needed in all games, especially um, if you're using different games outside, is the corrective feed, feedback, saying whether or not you're right or you're wrong and giving you the actual answer if you are wrong. Because you get it wrong and you just keep moving on, you, you don't know that answer because you got it wrong, right? So by giving them that answer, the next time they see it, they might remember it. Or if they miss it again, it'll give them that answer again. And hopefully after a few times in that repeated um, corrective feedback that they'll start to learn what that is. And so that's the whole goal of this app is to just be able to be engaged in school outside of school. So that's that's really the, the main thing because it engages them in school while they're creating this app and then outside of school when they have the app and they've created it. So in order to, to make these apps, we have to code. And coding is kind of foreign to most people, but it's actually not as bad as you think. The first page, just to go to another screen, is a few little buttons. You have, it's in chronological order as well. And this actually, if you know this and you can see this, it helps to actually teach yourself because I had to teach myself how to create this app. And so I had to find videos to help me um, find how to go to another page, how to create that link that goes to the Google Doc when I click that button. And so it can be as simple as when you click this button, it opens the screen and then it goes to the screen. So I clicked the button, it takes me to another screen and it was screen two. Then I know this can look very complicated and this scares most away, but this is actually the coding for my game. And it looks very scary, but when you start off, you start off with a button. So you have on the very far left where it says button to click here and then all everything else below. So as you move on, that's when everything gets a little bit more complex. But it, like I said, it's in chronological order. When you watch videos, there's very good videos of teaching how to create different things like a board game or just a simple game. And it's, it's really not as, as bad as it looks. So to conclude today's presentation, unfortunately, COVID has hindered our hopes of in, in implementing this new innovative way of teaching. But like I said, I am in student teaching, as I said a little bit earlier, and I've actually already created some questions. And so as soon as our school updates Canvas, uh, some of y'all might know what that is, um, we'll be able to put a link in and ask them a few questions like, what do you like about school? What, what would you like to use more technology in? Like what subjects? And would you? Um, do you wish there were more uh, what do you wish there was more in mathematics? Do you wish there was more technology? Do you wish it just was traditional, just scratch paper and a pencil, just working out math problems? Um, if you had the opportunity to make an application for math, uh, what, what would you use it for? Would you make it for math, English, history, reading, science, and other subject? Like I said earlier, robotics, art, it can literally be created for anything. And then just if you had the opportunity to make an app, would you? And so the students will have access to instructional YouTube videos and it'll contain tutorials on creating how to create an account for this website, how to create a similar mobile application close to what I've created, like for the game or to go to a Google Docs so you can have vocabulary. And it'll even have links to YouTube to help um, 
create other kinds of apps that have been created already and then they can make it their own. So I just wanna say thank you for uh, listening. And I think there was a question. I don't know if that was for me or not. Спасибо большое, Preston. So, Preston, thank you very much. Thank you. That was a very interesting report. Ну ладно. Значит, очень интересная презентация. It was a very interesting report and хорошая идея преподавать Your idea is wonderful to teach maths. Okay, so I will speak English because it's not so hard, so comfortable to hear myself uh, in English uh, in parallel. Okay, so uh, it's a wonderful idea to um, to teach math in such a way, and uh, one of the reason is the following: that um, um, when you teach math and uh, in parallel, in para parallel, sorry, uh, you teach uh, um, IT, yes, and you teach programming uh, at the same time. Mm, it's a good training for special way of thinking, special math thinking. And so I think that uh, it's a really very uh, bright and brilliant idea. Uh, uh, as far as I understood, uh, you uh, did not try. You were going to try it the next fall, next autumn, but you uh, have not tried it yet. Or you have uh, you had some tries yes ma'am so i was in the classroom last semester but i i was not able to like uh, be able to implement anything just because covid was still kind of hard because we're we're really playing catch up it seems um especially like this semester we're still trying to get students um they're still struggling with just multiplying and dividing in general and so you're playing catch up while trying to you know teach them more so Hopefully I can at least get the, the questions done and just kind of see what students think because that's the ultimate goal is we want them to enjoy it, right? And so by asking them them questions, we can see if it, it would be a good, good plan to try to do and maybe even a program after school. Um, that way we're not having to worry about other subjects during the day. So I, I really would like to to try to do this and hopefully maybe uh, some people listening today uh, might try as well. Uh -huh. Thank you. And um, um, as far as I understand, you now study at the university or maybe college, I don't know, I'm not sure. And uh, you have some practice at the same time at school, yes? And yes, you are to try uh, all your ideas uh, during, within your practice. Yes. Yes, ma'am. So I have finished all my classes besides my like I have this is my last semester. And so the last semester of teaching or for education for college, you're in the classroom every day, all day and for one semester. And so that's why I'm trying to try to implement it this semester if I can. But if not, uh, when I start teaching full time and I'm, I've graduated college, I would like to try to do it with whatever district I am with. Uh -huh. And um, um, uh, could you tell me if it was your own idea, how you are going to spend these practical hours in school? So uh, as far as I understand, you invented, you, uh, um, yes, you composed by yourself, your way to spend practice. So you invented to uh, do such math applications together with children and uh, you are going to try it, yes? It's, uh, it's about uh, the agency, teacher's agency, yes? Because we discussed it uh, some time ago, yes? That uh, in Russia, it's a real problem uh, to provoke, to support teacher's agency, agency subjectness. Uh, and um, here, uh, I think that it's um, 
act of agency of a student, yes, to invent uh, his own way to spend practice. Uh, what, I, what do you think about that? Uh, if I understood correctly, um, I did. So I come about this app um, through my technology class with Dr. Koptolov that uh, spoke a little bit earlier. And that's what kind of created my passion for this. And um, we have intervention, especially in Texas, we have like intervention periods where students aren't learning a particular subject. They're trying to catch up. So maybe this can be something that teachers use to try to teach um, any subject that they need and also create life skills at the same time. And I, I'm not sure if that answered your question though. I've got it. Thank you. Uh, and what do you think about um, the practical uh, practical application of your idea? So, uh, what do you think? Uh, how uh, ordinary teachers, teachers who work now at schools, how they will um, attitude? What do uh, they think about? Uh, such idea to teach math in such a way. If you come uh, to teach, if you come to school and say and tell teachers, okay, let's do uh, mathematical applications with uh, with your children. What will they tell you? What do you think? So um, that actually, that's a very good question, and I haven't thought about that too much. But I do know, like as. Um, we move on more people are more uh, they're better suited to work with technology technology um so i think it would be a, a slow process at first trying to implement this and i feel like you would definitely have to have a training of some sort with teachers that would want to use this application because it is it, it can be difficult like i i it took me a, a little while to create this app because you have to, if you don't know what you're doing, you have to go to a YouTube or uh, and this website has videos as well that can help. And so you kind of have to do your own research. Being their own application. So I think at first it might be a little slow, but as they get more experience and using this, they might see that the students really having to solve problems on paper. Am I breaking up? Can you still hear me? Yes. Okay, sorry, I, it said no, connections. So, um, so yeah, so it'll be a little slow at first, but I think as the years like moved on, it would get a little bit better when we get a little bit more experienced. So at first slow, but better over time. Okay, thank you again. Так, коллеги, у нас осталось буквально три минуты. So colleagues, we have three minutes left. So you wanted to ask something, Grigory? Yeah, so can I just ask the question, just a technical one? I will ask it in English then. Preston, can you say me why uh, did you choose uh, the Android uh, OS for your app? Uh, I think that it's more uh, interesting and more uh, in uh, will be a more uh, prof uh, will will give more profit to use uh, telegram it's uh, bots uh, because uh, there is a, uh, there is opportunity to uh, connect the auditory or the os uh, os uh, phones and uh, we can uh, we can give this application 
an international uh, an international idea why technically you uh, decided to make it on android uh, it was uh, easy for you like a teacher and creator or it's uh, more auditory of the uh, devices i so i i have an android and that's why i kind of went with android i'm not sure if mit uh works with iphones that is something i have not tried i actually would like to try that that is definitely one of the big questions will it work with iphones um because once you complete the application you have to it's kind of a weird way to be able to download it to your phone and so with iPhone being a little bit more particular and not uh, just being able to download any app, I feel like there you would have to find a way to be able to do that because it was a little tricky f figuring it out for the phone. So I went with Android just mainly because I have an Android phone. But you create it. I created the app on a laptop or any computer, and then you can connect it to your phone while you're creating it to test it out. Uh, thank you. And uh, there is no the app in uh, Google Play. Yes, it is. It is not in Google Play. So I basically downloaded it to the drive, Google Drive, and then I had to like email it to myself. And then I was able to download it that way. That's about the simplest way I can and say it without like showing the whole process. It's interesting to try this app in different countries, for example, in Russia, because uh, I have uh, students from from 10th or 11th from who I made uh, the same app. Uh, but uh, there they have an opportunity to uh, give it for a uh, big number of people. It's uh, interesting to try uh, the app uh, to big number of people. Right. I'm, when I'm, you... sure, I'm sure there's a, a way you could be able to like translate the language. Um, that would be just something you would have to like research. And uh, I think it would be a great idea to be able to share it internationally. I do. So Andre um, joined us here in the chat, so he is a um, mentor. Yes, I have been his, I have tried to inspire him and help him. So that is the MIT. And they apply it found. So they apply this platform so that to give the opportunity for the students of schools to work with coding and to create their own applications that are oriented to the subject learning. Yes, thank you very much. So, esteemed colleagues, we must uh, finalize. So then that will be the finalizing of the forum's work. And I would like to thank everyone for our today's two hours of uh, session. So we have managed to discuss a lot of things and that's a good idea. So we didn't just uh, speak up. So that's kind of a good push up for our work continuation, considering mentoring, thinking and horizontal discussion. So that's it. Thank you so much.